Okay, welcome back to our lecture series on single cell high throughput data science. Today, we are going to uh, talk about the single cell immunoreptor uh, profiling data analysis. This is a lecture number nine. Okay, as we know, uh, antigen recombination by immune system, and that's the most important uh, process and involve two most important cell types, T cell and the B cell. And uh, in order to uh, recognize billions of different possible antigens, we need a special structure and uh, uh, there's process involved in those B cell and the T cell, the most important, the most abundant immune cells. As we can see here, there's a, a cartoon for T help cells and the uh, structure of T cell receptor and that's a CD4 positive cell. And uh, it requires this particular structure to recognize MHC molecule present by dendritic cells or uh, macrophages. So uh, how this diversity has been generated is require we, uh, a particular structure of T cell receptor. And here is the structure of this. And then we need a process called the T cell receptor gene rearrangement. So you have different combinations of these gene fragments in order to create a different types of T cell receptors. Similar principle apply to B cell and we will mention it immediately after we introduce all the concepts around the T cells. So that's the structure of the T cell receptor. And the, this is a hydrothermic receptors. And the, we have alpha, beta, gamma, and delta, different genes. And the, most of the times, alpha and beta are the main uh, types of this T cell receptor types and uh, so that's a combination either alpha beta chain or gamma data chain and it, it's it contains this this is so-called variable region and also with their uh, constant region so the variable region determines the properties of the t cell receptor determine its uh, affinity to different types of antigens. And this variable region contains V and the G region, and the, also their D region. Um, so that's what's so-called VDG regions, and then uh, they are uh, different fragments of the variable chains and they give you the combinations of different types. So that's the and that's the uh, uh, T cell receptor genes and uh, as we see uh, we know 90 to 95 percent of T cell have this alpha and beta chain combinations, well, uh, only five to 10% T cells have gamma and beta chain uh, combinations. And that's the gene for alpha chain and beta chain in uh, chromosome 14 and seven. For gamma and beta is on the chromosome seven and 14 different arms. And for each of them, there are um, V or G segments, and they all have these constant segments. And there are different types of the V or D or G segments uh, provide this complementary uh, 
foundations to uh, from different uh, chain combinations, segment combinations within, within the chain. And that's the genome browser for the humans. And then uh, I show you the position of chromosome seven and um, long arm this position. You see uh, that's a T receptor gene beta chain and there are clusters of the beta chain of different types and the V segments. Okay. And that's the alpha chain, uh, variable region genes, different segments. That's on the chromosome 14 and this pollution. You see here you have a TRA, that's alpha chain. Uh, V2, that's the variable region uh, number two. That's the variable region number six. So that's the, the, the locus of a receptor of a chain. And here on the chromosome number seven, and this position, you have clusters of uh, T receptor gene gamma chain, and there are uh, G variable, V variable regions. So that's the, the basic gene structure of those receptor genes. Okay, with that we can see um, genomics foundation has been provided for this large amount of the receptor uh, variable region this uh, gene cluster uh, from which you can uh, you can see like different types of the variable region to uh, rearrange at the somatic level and to uh, produce different types of the receptor products and that's the foundation of the diversity and this uh, these figures show you the available uh, variable region and the VDG regions from uh, alpha, beta, gamma, and uh, delta receptor. And this show you one of the example for uh, beta gene and the combined from the uh, D1 and they combined with uh, J6 and that's the first DG rearrangement and then from the V segments and the V3 is selected and then make this DGV rearrangement re 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 at the end you have this beta chain of the receptor contains V3, D1, and J256, and the constant segment, this particular combination of this MRA, and then translate, will be translated into the beta chain of the T cell receptor. Okay, because, because you have a large amount of this variable region segments, and then uh, for both, uh, for V, D, and the J segments, and then so you have uh, combinations, possible combinations in series 10 to the minus 14. Because this uh, uh, receptor itself is a dimer, so you can uh, have a diversity from both beta chain and alpha chain combined. 
And if you consider these paired possibilities, then this theory out of bound is 10 to the uh, 24 power. So this provides the theoretical raptor uh, diversity level really, really high. By the way, the rearrangement of T cell receptors happen in timers, and then uh, this is a process having its own uh, spatial structure foundation, and then uh, start from a different uh, uh, position in the thymus in the from a cortex to medulla and the bone marrow cells will go through this so-called uh, positive negative selection and the, through so called uh, double negative stage at that stage there's no surface uh, cd4 cd8 uh, expression that's within the timers and then different position of timers and then um, the uh, primary or oh, immature T cell have an interaction with the epithelium cell in T timers and then uh, that's interaction between these two cell types and the essentially this premature T cells be trained and then undergo different stage of the double negative. And then uh, first we have a B chain rearrangement happen. Then we have alpha chain rearrangement happen in later stage of the double negative stage. And also there are gamma and the beta chain rearrangement happen relatively late. So that's where uh, the uh, diversity of a T cell receptor, receptor and been formed similarly. And in B cell, we have, oh, we also have the VDG re recombination happen in a uh, cell, a B cell, and then uh, that's immunoglobin gene being expressed. And uh, uh, with these combinations of BDG segments and create different types of antigen specificity uh, from the B cell through this recombination. And the same principle apply here you have a uh, VDG combinations to form the large uh, diversity, large amount of diversity in the uh, B cell receptor as well. Similar principle. So understand this diversity and the profile of those receptor raptor uh, is important for us to understand uh, a system and uh, its immune status of a system. For example, uh, before and after the challenge of antigens, if we uh, know the change of this red or uh, Raptor uh, profiling, we will have a better understanding how the immune response specifically uh, changed our response to the, uh, the antigen. So uh, this is a review published before the single cell data become available. So you remember this is timeline is important. This is 2015. And it's practical guideline for uh, B cell receptor raptor sequencing analysis. Uh, you can sequence those uh, receptor genes targetly, uh, targets, and then uh, 
through this making and uh, particular using particular reference uh, database and to look at the VDG annotation for all this uh, genes you sequenced from a sample. And then uh, in the early stage, so this a review paper published in 2018 and review the bike in the last decades and the immunologist using uh, flu cytometry to label cells with different markers in order to understand the uh, immune profiling. Uh, they focus on the receptors, T cell, B cell receptors. Okay, the difference between you use traditional bark sequence compared to single cell raptor sequence is that if you use bark sequencing, you lost the information about the alpha chain and the beta chain combination on the same cell. So if you pull those samples together, you don't have this information of the combinations of alpha beta chain. So you don't know whether this beta chain was paired with this alpha chain. However, in the single cell sequencing arrangement, you recover the full lens of this uh, receptor chain genes, and also you can uh, have the paired information. So uh, you get not only the type, but also the combinations of alpha and the beta chain. Uh, for example, then you have the full uh, information of the contact receptor information for each individual cell. So that's provide uh, analysis foundation for further uh, correlation between the antigen and the, your, the types of the uh, receptors. Okay, so most important advance happened in 2018 where 10X Genomics released their single cell T cell receptor or B cell receptor amplification keys. So that's uh, the, the sample looks like, the, the keys look like. And this is for human T cell. And that's for human B cell. They also have the uh, same two keys for mouse sample. And that's a, a part number, and that's a, the name, and that's what uh, the, the target, so-called target enrichment keys, specifically designed for human T cell, human B cell, mouse T cell, and mouse B cell. So this information is extracted from the uh, currently single cell VDG, so-called VDG, uh, reagent kits, okay, information is extracted from the user guide. So you can use this to amplify and uh, to give you a comprehensive scale solution for amplifying this receptor and uh, for T cell and uh, uh, B cell. So for T cell receptors, for B cell, immunoglobin uh, transcripts. So it's, at the same time, you can have a G expression, single cell RNA G expression uh, for other genes, not only for receptor genes. If you uh, do this combinedly, you have both information. So this uh, VDG Reagents kit is belong uh, 
belongs to a so-called uh, not not only so there's only one one part of this uh, products and in general you can uh, combine and use different keys to get the whole transcriptome or targeted gene expression so we know that from the uh, previous lecture those single cell RSA expression data at the same time if you know how to combine a uh, particular cell surface protein and you get expression for those surface protein genes then you have to use particular uh, surface protein anti antibody probably um, to help you in this analysis and then you have an antigen specificity uh, read odds and then uh, this D is what we are talking about here is a, a paired immune receptor sequences so uh, this is a general single cell RNA so you get an expression level for all the genes expressed and the D is what we are talking about here is uh, immune cell receptor profiling but the point here is you can use uh, all of this technology at the same time for the same sample. How can you do it? So the, the uh, starting steps are the same. You have your cell uh, preparation and then you go through these controllers and then you have a separate the cells in the, uh, in the gel bin uh, in captured in this uh, droplets and then you can uh, see I want to amplify VDG and from the receptor genes you can uh, prepare a library from uh, the sample then you also at the same time you want to have a gene expression level so you can have this uh, single cell RNA preparation and that's a uh, five primer assay and then you can use other featured barcodes and then you can do either surface protein profiling or antigen specificity. So from the same sample, same preparation of single cell, then you can separate your library and then to do a separated enhancement analysis. So what we are uh, we'll be focusing on uh, right now is this full length either B cell or T cell gene receptor genes at single cell level, the so-called immune raptor uh, profiling. Okay, so we use a single cell immune profiling assay to examine receptor repertoire. And then uh, for both T cell and the B cell, we will read out its uh, alpha chain and the beta chain, or in B cell, read out light chain and the heavy chain, the combinations of their uh, variable region and variable. BG or BDG combinations. And also we have a paired information so we know uh, which are the chain and which beta chain are combined and form these receptor genes in this particular cells of T cell, for example. So how this uh, library preparation is performs, performed. Here is a, uh, the major steps and mentioned in the user uh, manual. <clears throat> so remember, uh, the first step is we are going to prepare the gel bin, and then uh, the gel bin uh, have the its uh, 
10x barcode, you have UMI barcode, and here we have a template switch oligo, so called TSO. And then uh, this gel bin will uh, be in captured along with the cells. And then uh, and enzymes and make uh, oil droplet. So that's the the uh, the same procedure as we used for single cell RSA. Uh, isolate cell preparation. Okay, so uh, remember we mentioned it's previously in the, this illustration, it's based on the three primer assay schema. And you have a poly T oligo here. And then uh, your switch oligo is here. So uh, then through your CDNA amplification, you have your uh, mRNA uh, sequence in the middle. And the five primer assays have a slightly different arrangement. The uh, switch oligo is here. And then you have your poly T primer at this end. So the VDG profiling keys is based on the five primer, and it's, uh, it will sequence the full length of the receptor gene and then use this five primer assay. So you will see this slightly different from the three primer assay. So that's the first step is to generate uh, geo beans and then uh, use this barcode system to uh, capture individual cells to uh, use that information to uh, to tell which cell is which. And here is a geo bead. Then you have your uh, TSO article here and you have a poly T primer. And then through this process, you uh, amplify. Uh, so by the way, uh, that's 13 base pair template switch oligo here. Okay, after uh, reverse transcription, then the, after the reaction, we have a clean up step in the QC steps. Um, so that clean up, get rid of the leftover chemicals, reagents, and the primers. Then you have those uh, bead captured in uh, CDNA has been purified. In this step, and then um, we will have a CDNA amplification step. So after you have the CDNA captured, then through this amplification, you amplify all the uh, to to generate sufficient material to in order to construct multiple library from a same cell. So that's important to amplify your CDNA and then you can separate it from now on to different library preparation. So you can go to do the, the T cell or B cell or G, G expression and G expression. So after this step, you can, you can separate in your library to do a different downstream assay. Uh, so let's see, uh, we decide to do the target enrichment from the CDNA library is prepared. If you uh, want to do a full length VTG segment, that's either for T cell or uh, B cell, you can do it. 
And uh, especially if you have a sample contain both T cell and B cell, you may uh, do this uh, TCR or IG uh, region enrichment separately so you can get information about your uh, T cell and B cell transcripts enriched in the separated reactions from the same amplified cDNA material. Remember the same uh, cDNA material contains the information of the individual cell that's the cell barcode in there. So you will uh, get the information uh, for the uh, for the identifier, the cells individually. Either they are uh, B cells or they are uh, B cells or T cells. You can trace back to the same cell. Once you decide to do the gene expression analysis for those cells as well. So, the next step is enrich the library construction. You want to uh, construct a library for sequencing after you uh, did this enrichment. So basically this will be uh, preparing uh, the Illumina sequence uh, library by adding this P5, P7, uh, and also sample index around your amplified uh, and enrich the library. Okay, as I said, if you decide to read out all the GA expression level as well, rather than only the T cell or B cell receptor raptor, so you can uh, further process the same library, amplify the library and the construct G expression library. This is a five primer assay and the uh, <clears throat> same as a three primer assay and you can get the, the UMI matrix for all the cells G expression for all the genes rather than only receptor genes. Okay, so that's the final sequencing library for Illumina sequence. The structure of the two different library, one is from the BDG enriched library, another is the five primer gene expression library. Um, remember, they come from the same amplified library, and then uh, separate into this two sequencing library preparation. So if they have a cell barcode, it will share the same cell barcode here. If you have a T cell here, for example, the ampli amplified library will be sent to both expression level SC and also the receptor raptor profiling assay, you will have uh, the cross, valid, uh, cross information for the same cell in the two different libraries. Okay, for example, if you have already got the, uh, the sequencing library have been sequenced in Illumina and then you get the output of fast, fast Q file. Then you will use, you would like to use a particular uh, comment, which in the cell render software package, remember cell render is 10x genomics provided uh, the raw data analysis package it can be used to call uh, gene expression from for, for their uh, gene expression analysis. You get the UMI matrix, matrix. Here we use a special uh, 
comment option, the VDJ, and it will take the input of the fast queue from the VDG sequence library sequence and then produce the result of the profiling results. Just remember you need to have this VDG comments in order to run. And then uh, the first step is still to use make fast queue and then you use run VDG. There are other uh, options. And then remember, this is important to have a good reference of your VDG comparable reference that contains all the uh, sequence from a, a species you are analyzing. And then the VDG sequence for a different uh, uh, gene of the receptor genes. And then that's output of the Cell Ranger VDG analysis. You see a lot of those uh, contigs. Okay, that's a sequence which has been assembled. Uh, then the frequency of those different content contigs, each contigs may uh, be corresponding to a particular uh, receptor genes. Alpha or beta chain, for example, and then you have a clone type consensus, and that's an important output files. Then you have a summary um, annotation file, so that's the important information you will get at the end. So if you don't have the your own data, you can go to the 10x Genomics support website, and then you can uh, take a look of this single cell VDJ data set. This is one of the example. For example, uh, they um, demonstrate using their version two chemicals to do the melanoma tumor derived cell. Okay, this version two, they also have a previous version uh, results. Um, you can uh, have other different uh, experiment output as an example. Now uh, let's look at what's inside this data set. So this type of data set was generated from a melanoma, melanoma tumor derived the cell and then uh, they uh, that's the setup of the experiment. They first they uh, did a single cell RNA five primer analysis uh, and uh, they get a gene expression level and then they uh, did this B cell receptor enriched library sequence and also T cell receptor enriched sequence. Then, um, so they get the T expression level for a lot of cells. And then for, for this, this amount of cells, they have a B cell specific enriched uh, profiling and then for the T cells in this matrix, they have a T cell receptor enriched profiling. So there are three batches of the data sets. And across the batches of the, cell, uh, the, the data, you have a shared barcode for the same cell. And in the website here, you have a quality summary, one from the gene expression, and then uh, from a B cell receptor, VTG summary, and from a T cell. So let's switch to the website. I will show you what's in there. So that's uh, the website. And then uh, if I click, 
the expression summary. So that you already see before, and that's a typical single cell RNA UMI matrix. Uh, that's expression, uh, the number of cells over 8,000, and that's uh, median gene per cell, and then the median, uh, median rates per cell. So among those 8,000 cells, there are T cells and B cells. And if you view uh, B cell VDG summary, so you see uh, there are 5,000, over 5,000 cells information, and there are VDG productive VG stem pairs, and there are over 5,000 cells information. Similarly, uh, for T cell receptor, you have a, a estimated number of cells over 2,000, and including over 1,400 with uh, productive uh, VG stem pairs. So uh, for those cells, you have information about their alpha beta chain combinations. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> so the input file for Cell Ranger VDG uh, are the fast Q, either from a T cell or B cell. And this expression is for uh, UMI calling and for uh, expression analysis. And then the output, the first sets of the data is for gene expression because this sample has been uh, sequenced for gene expression and the T cell and B cell receptors. So the first bench is for gene expression. And then you have this uh, filtered matrix file from which, from where you can uh, get the UMI matrix gene expression level. And then the next cluster of files contains VDG for B cell receptor. And it has the clone type information, have a notation of consensus. Similarly, for T cell receptor VDG profiling, you have clone type information and the consensus annotation. And if you want to sequence itself, you still have them. So let's look at T cell receptor profiling results. And that's from the clone type, the table, and uh, it's SV, uh, CSV file, you can open it and use Excel sheet. And that's from the melanoma sample and the clone type. So you have a clone type one, five, three, and they are ordered by their frequency. You have clone type one appeared five times. For this particular clone type, you have a uh, alpha chain and beta chain, and also um, defined by their uh, CDR3 sequence. And the consensus annotation, that's also for the T receptor providing results. You have a different clone types, and then the consensus sequence. Um, so for the same clone type, you may find both alpha and beta chain. So you know the combinations of which type of alpha, which type of beta is combined in the same clone type. Let's see as an example, this clone type 1006 
their uh, alpha and beta chain available and it's paired. And then you have alpha VDG combinations information. And you have a beta v, uh, VG combinations. So you have this full length and also paired information have been uh, extracted out. This is an old uh, context annotation file, and that's the ID for the individual cell. And the, the context it belongs to after assembly. And uh, there are uh, alpha chain, if you found the same context ID, you can uh, find out the alpha beta chain combinations. This is a, this is a old context annotation file, contains the most comprehensive summary file. Okay, let's look at one of the context sequence. So for example, uh, we can uh, look at the clone type one sequence. And that's maybe, uh, maybe the most abundant ones in the sample, then you will uh, see, okay, for this clone type, then you can get the T cell receptor alpha chain sequence. And that's a, a gray sequence, this U, U uh, prime UTR. And then you have the red the V region. And then uh, for, uh, for beta chain, you have a purple HD region. And then uh, green indicates the G region. And then the, the rest, the blue, uh, the constant region. And the CDR region is in bold so here. CDR region for alpha chain, and then here is the CDR region for beta chain. CDR3. Yeah, so this is a full length sequence. So you have the pairs, you know the clone type, which pair. Um, alpha the beta chain are combined and you also have the full lens so this gave you the full information about the the receptor structure the combinations so it's very useful and the number one you can have a, a frequency analysis look this clone type one is the most abundant you need, you know the frequency is high and then uh, another uh, column type, you have a lower frequency. So uh, if you compare this frequency between two conditions, such as before and after infection, you may uh, realize, okay, particular column types have been uh, unproportionately amplified. That gave you information that this clone type contains the combinations of alpha beta chain combination may be very special for this infection provided antigen. And then uh, plus this binding specificity analysis, you will have the profile for different clone type and their uh, Binding affinity level for different uh, different antigens. So gave you a, a picture of the antigen binding specificity analysis. Then the, the size of this bubble indicated frequency of the cell. And the the color indicate the affinity of the bending specificity. 
so uh, this frequency table the figure can be further uh, illustrated using this new uh, new type of the illustration and so you have a more direct view about the amplification of a particular color type so that will be in the new version of the looper for the downstream analysis uh, they use the so-called BDG browser if you decide to use this you can choose to install the looper which is freely available and provided by the 10x genomics okay um, let's look at the intersection of different uh, similar phenotyping using T receptor, T cell receptor receptor profiling combined with other information. So um, this is uh, from the single cell RNA-seq gene expression. So that's uh, the clustering analysis. Then you can identify the different cell types. And here we have a B cell here, and then we have uh, T cells in these scopes. And then with the TCR clone type identifier, and you for the same set of cells, so you can match this, each individual cells with their um, clonal type, and then this is the most abundant clone type. And you can see all these different cell types of T cell is derived from uh, the same clonal type because they colored in the same color. And then you can go back to the sequence file to identify the sequence to find the sequence of this consensus cell and then uh, this full length and also paired as a beta chain. Similarly, for the B cell cluster, you can identify the B cell receptor, the clonal type is the most abundant one, and see a okay, majority of this B cell that derived from the same uh, clonal type, have the same clonal type. Similarly, you can get the consensus file uh, sequence from this clonal type. So the real power is through the single cell that's for every single cell your uh, sequenced and you can get a corresponding either uh, cell surface protein profiling or T cell or B cell clonal type because you have this barcoding system allow you to trace back to the individual cell and then look at their uh, this individual cells clonal type with match with their uh, receptor uh, sequence with their gene expression one by one. So that's where the power comes from. I hope through this lecture you have the, the picture on your mind that how those uh, receptor raptor uh, profiling can be applied in addition to the gene expression or independently to do this profiling analysis for the T cell, B cell receptors. Thank you for your attention. See you next time.